This video is only possible thanks to viewers like you. To support the channel and get more, go to patreon.com slash optimisticduelist and subscribe. Link in the description. So now that the class spec videos for all four of Hiveswap's protagonists are done, it's time to come clean about something. I'm not actually sure about Joey and Jude's class bets, particularly Joey's. I don't mean that either of those videos were pointless or entirely wrong. I think both of them are picking up on something in those characters, and the imagery for both of them seems pretty pronounced to me. And while a lot of people will tell you that it's just a theory, and of course I don't know anything for sure since we haven't been literally told their aspects or classes, Personally, I disagree. We were told the trolls aspects, and when you look at the actual content in Hiveswap, you pretty much always find at least one or two strong examples linking the troll to their corresponding aspect. The trouble is, we didn't get troll signs telling us the true aspects of Jude and Joey, which makes them a bit more challenging than the trolls we've seen so far. We have to try to reverse engineer their aspects from the context and environmental storytelling surrounding them, just like with the classes. I personally don't see much in Jude that isn't Doom-oriented, but Joey's a different story, so let's focus on her here. The trouble with Joey is that I can't really tell if she's actually a maid of light, or simply role-playing one in imitation of A. Claire. I think we've seen this sort of thing from the Homestuck kids before. For example, Rose Lalonde's Grimdark episode. Many fans consider her simply inverting from light to light's opposite aspect, void. I think this is a little more complicated, because any player of any aspect can switch to any other aspect depending on the circumstances. For example, I regard Trickster Mode as analogous to Grimdark, only with all of the alphas being overcharged with life instead of void. Rose tells us that she couldn't really understand her mother early on, and this obviously seems to frustrate her when we look back at her character. She's interested in the horror terrors as a force of the dark and unknowable because she experienced her mother as something dark and unknowable. And her quest to understand her mother spans Rose's entire arc. So I read her as misunderstanding her mother's nature as a rogue, which results in Rose's misguided subconscious attempt to emulate her mother by playing out the role of the active magician, the witch. When she manifests Void influence, I think it's not just because Light and Void are opposites, but because she's influenced by her mother Roxy, who is a Void player. So let's get back to Joey. The only other aspect Joey could be bound to is life, and in that capacity she seems less like a maid and more like an heir, the passive magician class. For example, she's got entire wizard-themed dances, and she readily admits that buyers would make a good wizard's familiar, but also says she's not sharing. In fact, all of Joey's pets could easily parse as familiars linked to the aspect of life. Joey being an heir of life has a strong personal appeal to me, to be honest, because it would make her a combination of the classbacks of the two leaders of the human sessions, John Egbert and Jane Crocker, an heir of breath and maid of life, respectively. Maybe the best point in favor of the idea is that Joey's most treasured possession is her mother's heirloom, and the red-green swirl depicted on the key is, in the context of Homestuck, explicitly a symbol of life. Which I'll prove in a minute, but hold that thought, because this brings us to the main thrust of the problem I'm dealing with. Which is that to figure out Joey's title, we need to understand what A. Claire's is. From Hiveswap proper, we only have a few data points on A. Claire to look at. She likes baking, which is traditionally associated with life, but the name Claire can mean either clear or famous, which calls to mind Light's association with fame, importance, and mental clarity, and that's about it. In general, we know precious little about A. Claire, which means that if we want to understand Joey, we're simply going to have to wait for Canon to tell us more about A. Claire. But as it turns out, I do have a guess as to who A. Claire is, and I think she's been hiding right under our noses the entire time. That's right, I think A. Claire is in fact another version of Jane. Now a lot of you are going to think that sounds nuts, because we already know who Jane was in the Beta Universe. She was Nana, the long-estranged sister of Jude and Joey's pa. 
who's pictured with Pa and their dog Hallie on the half Harley Manor family wall. But hear me out, Jane is a maid of life, a class that I parse as making life for their own benefit. And one of the ways that seems to manifest is that at the end of Homestuck, she's left with the most living counterpart at the same time, in the same place, of anyone in the cast. So it seems plausible to me to suggest that if any hero is going to manifest their powers by living out multiple lifespans in the same existential context, it would probably be a life player, and certainly a maid of life, who would essentially be granting herself multiple lives to fulfill her desires, albeit by living as different people with no direct awareness of each other. We also have the first page of Detective Pony, the book that Dirk Strider wrote for Jane for her birthday. Dirk is a heartbound, which means he's uniquely connected to souls and identity, and it's been shown that his intuition is able to pick up on moments that he experienced in past lifetimes, which makes it interesting to notice that on this page of Detective Pony, the very same page where he correctly guessed the way that Jude and Joey's father got his surname, Harley, he suggests that Anna would almost be a good name for Jane, though he isn't sure why, which would match A. Claire's mysterious first name. It's also worth noting that both versions of Jane are raised by the Batter Witch, an ancient and powerful thief of life bound to the service of Lord English, who those of you who have only played Hive Swap will recognize as the troll empress that Zephros is so afraid of. Jake runs away early in life to make his own fortune, but Nana stays behind and begins learning the Batter Witch's secrets, including the fact that Nana and Jake are not actually brother and sister, which is true because the Alpha Kids are true Paradox clones related only to themselves and their genetic offspring. But what's more interesting is the Batter Witch's prophecy. She tells Nana that she and Jake were always destined to be married one day, and that they were destined to have two children, a son and a daughter, and that these children were meant to save the world. Now, Nana herself never meets Jake again, and so many fans assume that these children were just John and Jade, who are the ectobiological offspring of Jane Crocker and Jake English. But the prophecy specified a marriage, and if a Claire is a clone of Nana, then the prophecy would be true, only with Jude and Joey as the prophesized offspring. And it's worth mentioning that the Batter Witch has a long history of dabbling in genetic manipulation and cloning to achieve her objectives. Oh, and it's worth noting that it's likely Jude is also dealing with his grandmother's legacy, because the Batter Witch has the strange habit of delegating all of her nefarious agendas exclusively to the service of evil clown juggalos, which she does on Alternia and on the later version of Earth that she destroys. Until Hype Swap, we had no reason to think she'd seeded any on the beta version of Earth, but Jude considers the mysterious residents of Haunt Switch that he's so scared of cultists and Joey describes some of the kids in Haunt Switch as both evil and clowns. So she would actually have the means to clone Nana if she so desired, and we might have a motive. The Troll Empress has an implied desire to mentor a future heiress to her throne. And since Jane is a fellow life player, she acquires the Batter Witch's keen interest and tutelage, in both her Alpha incarnation and as Nana. But the name Anna can mean both graceful, which definitely describes Joey's mom, and favored, perhaps in the sense of favored child? So it could be that Nana was found wanting or lacking in some way, and A. Claire was created to serve as the Batter Witch's true heiress in the beta timeline. If true, that also explains why the Batter Witch left her company to Jake upon her sudden disappearance instead of Nana. She wasn't leaving Crocker Corp to her runaway son, but to her true heiress, to whom she might also have left the means by which she traveled from Alternia to Earth in the first place, the Sheriff Portal and Snake Key themselves, both of which bear the red-green spiral that Jane Crocker also inherits from the Batter Witch, as part of her imposed duties as an heiress. The reason I said this pattern was intrinsically a symbol of life earlier is because it's a reference to Orin from The NeverEnding Story. In the book's final pages, the true form of Orin is revealed to be a place where huge statues of the snakes combine together to form a sort of pool or fountain, where they're described as guarding the water of life. 
The symbol of Orin itself is made up of snakes, literal living creatures. Like Doom, life seems to have a measure of duality inherent in its nature, but if Doom is concerned with the duality of what the world forces on us through fate, both good and bad, then life is concerned with what we do to the world, the question of good and evil. Cherubs, who biologically embody Orin, are split evenly along good and evil lines. So too are the Pixies trolls, distinguished by Feferi's benevolence in contrast to Mina's malevolence. Jane Crocker herself experiences wild shifts between good and evil because of the adult Mina's influence on her. Now, it's worth noting that Maid is, if anything, probably the most active of all the classes. Maids seem to be forced into roles of indentured servitude to their aspects for long periods of time, and their arcs require them to claim their power back from their aspect and take control of their lives for themselves. When they're at their best, they can be extremely self-assured and self-sufficient. Aradia Megiddo was able to stay mostly by herself alone in the void for thousands of years, carrying out the duties that she chose because she found them enjoyable. And early on in Jane Crocker's arc, her indentured servitude is the role of the heiress itself, because it tempers that strong will and self-assured nature, forcing her to focus more on others and achieving their wants and needs over her own. And since as a Jane clone, A. Claire would also be a maid, we might expect that the role of the heiress might have had a similar negative effect on her, even one that negatively affected her life, as in, her ability to stay alive and this might have even caused her to manifest the light aspect. So if all of this is true, you might be able to understand why I'm struggling so much with Joey. Because we know it's not just a matter of kids innately role-playing the true nature of their guardian figures. Rose inherently misunderstood her mom, and that led her roleplay to manifest in an unexpected way. So if Joey is roleplaying an imitation of A. Claire, is she copying her true maid class, or her imposed heiress role? Is she picking up on her true aspect of life, or the light aspect affinity that life circumstances might have forced her into? Where does Joey Claire end, and A. potentially Anna Claire begin? I have no idea how to answer these questions right now, but my gut tells me that Joey might truly be an heir. While Jane's inheritance was deeply toxic and destructive to her, Joey uses it as a sort of consolation from all of the pain and suffering in her life. It's something she values and treasures and draws power from. Joey also seems to be much more effective as a team player, working with all sorts of animal companions who could be called familiars, where Jane would just overpower her obstacles full force by herself when she was at her strongest. She's much more of a solo operator by comparison. And there's a sort of delicious irony in the idea that the true heir of life that the Batter Witch so desired to take under her wing would turn out to be a granddaughter she never knew, and whose role would be not to empower and expand the Troll Empress's constant imperial conquest, but to find herself freeing people from her adoptive grandmother's evil tyranny right on her home turf of Alternia. So there we go. That's everything I've got for you guys on Hive Swap for right now. I have no clue how much of this is true, or when or how we'll see it elaborated on, but it does leave me incredibly curious for the future of Hiveswap and Haunt Switch. So let me know what you guys think. Does any of this sound compelling? Does it at least sound interesting? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching! This video exists thanks to the support of my wise cohort of patrons. If you'd like to summon more videos like this onto your screen, then you can join them. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's all for now. Until next time, keep rising.